You just talk about any crease? Yeah, we live. Okay. I can always change the title. No, that's okay. It's okay. It's all good. Hey, Shalom, Michael Shalom. 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 First and foremost, as always, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, my Hashem, Yahweh Shad, my Hashem, Rechakwadash. We want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught us his truth and that's still teaching his truth. And much peace, love, and salutation to the elect of Yahweh, Bashi, and Yahweh Shad. Christian, we're going to with sincerity. Shalom. Um, Great Millstone Dallas here, back again with another lesson. Uh, this weekend and uh what we want to do is just go more so into a mindset of how uh one thing that the apostle paul said he said i became all things to all men which is a very very good uh quality and a good wise mindset to have based upon how we deal with people in the world you know how we deal amongst one another so that uh at the end of the day how about you know shot can be pushed without offense you know, of course, ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, if somebody's coming up and they're a complete demon, you know what I'm saying? You know, we, we deal in measure. You know, we, we understand and know that there's a time and a place for everything, and, you know, uh, a time to speak and a time to refrain from speaking and, and pretty much learning how to read spirits. You know, so as we're coming in, growing and getting older, you know, there's just particular things that we can hone in more and key in, keep more into, you know, to be uh, better ministers and servants. So uh, it's actually... Can a brother pull, what's that, First John 4 or 1? Or it says, uh, uh, try the spirits, try the spirits, or is that James 1? Yeah, yeah. John, First John, okay, yeah. Somebody can pull that real quick. We start off with that. All right, dude, First John 4 and 1. It says, beloved, believe not every spirit, mm -hmm. but try the spirits, whether they are of the most high, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Right, so we have to try the spirits, whether they be of the Yahweh, Bosh, and Yahweh, Shah. We're not to just believe anybody that comes up and just starts talking. You know, we, 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 the way that we try spirits is, is, is through the scriptures. You know, somebody walks up, you know, and, and they say, you know, that they're Israelite or whatever, and they're a teacher, you know, whatever the case may be. Well, you know, we, we go to the scriptures to see if the doctrine lines up with truth and sincerity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, we're not going to be getting together with somebody that, that believes in hell. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and believing that there's a place where you burn forever in hell or, you know, a spirit, a spirit that's made out of fire goes to a place where you burn forever. That doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Or the MOTB is an embargo of sin or whatever, whatever the case may be. If it doesn't line up with, if it doesn't line up to prophecy with the scripture say, no, you got to, that's, that's, that's what goes into trying, man. You got to prove, you got to prove who, who comes up. That's how you try the spirits. Oh, this is uh first Thessalonians 5 and 21. It says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Right. Yeah, man, that's simple and plain. Like if, if we see somebody that you know is asking a question, or even before they even ask a question, they, they may make a pro proclamation and say, I believe in this. Mm -hmm. You already know how to deal with that person, you know. Not, I mean, of course, you still teach, but you just use discernment based off of what the person said. They say they're a Christian, that we already know the doctrine that they adhere to. They believe that, you know, Jesus, most likely they believe that, you know, G, you know the, the Messiah is, you know, his name is Jesus. And they believe in, you know, the image of Caesar Borgia. So we have to look and see. Actually, can I get that word proof? Yeah. Uh, that word proof is uh, Strong's G1381, Dokimazo. <laughs> it says it says to test to examine so when you're examining an individual you scanning them you know you they're, they're under the scope it says to scrutinize to see whether a thing is genuine or not such as a metal so you look in to see okay is this person sincere and if not then we move accordingly mm -hmm. so you gotta you know with, with particular people you gotta drop down to particular levels with particular individuals you know you gotta know you know, you got to know how deep in the water you can go with somebody, you know, because somebody coming up, walking up, that may not necessarily, you know, that we could be inquiring and they have faith and believe, but they're newly, you know, they're newly converted. You don't want to go too deep with somebody because, they, you know, it could, it could be too much. So it's just learning how to, it's learning how to go to particular levels with particular brothers and, and knowing when to, how to gauge that, you know what I'm saying? And that really just takes this discernment. It takes experience, you know what I'm saying? It really just takes the spirit of Yahweh watching our shot, dealing with you on that level to know how deep you can go with somebody. You know, anybody say any precept? Okay. We can uh, jump to first Corinthians nine. So we can start at verse nineteen. I got it right here. Okay. First Corinthians nine, 
1 Corinthians 9 and 19, it says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Right. So, you know, the Apostle Paul, he was free in a sense, whereas, you know, he was, he was, a, he was a Roman citizen. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time, you had individuals who were actually servants in people's, in, in people's households. So you would learn particular customs or particular ways of being servant or, uh, as your master. You know, but he was actually free. You know, but it said, but I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. You see, because when we, when we, when we, when we, when we teach this truth, we do these lessons, we go out there on the highways and byways. Really, this is the greatest form of servitude that anybody can do, especially with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that the Lord has blessed us with. This is the this is the greatest form of servitude that we can exude. It's in its liberty. It's free. It's freely given. As a matter of fact, uh, can somebody get Galatians five and thirteen real quick? Galatians five and thirteen. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Mm -hmm. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Right. So with the liberty that we have in Yahweh Bash and Shai, all right, not being bound by that first covenant. You know, it says we've been called unto liberty. Liberty only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, because even with the liberty in Yahweh Shai, sometimes it can get to people's minds, whereas it, it, it causes them to be puffed up in the head. It caused them to act fleshly in a sense, whereas now this truth is more so geared towards their personal well-being. You know, and, and, and Yahweh Shai is pretty much pushed out of the way because now they're trying to fulfill their own lust or, or, or fill their own belly. But it says, but by love, serve one another. You see, because Yahweh Shai exuded the greatest form of, of brotherhood and servitude that any man can do. You know, the, the example of washing, the, uh, washing his disciples' feet. When you go into the custom of washing feet, like that's that's the lowest form. That's pretty much the basis form of servitude that that anybody can have in a master's household is, is, being, is being a foot washer. You know, and Yahweh showed that as, as an example. He actually said that in John 15, he said, "Let this be an example unto you of how you need to treat one another." You see, mm -hmm. I got a precept. Come, come, go. This is uh First Peter's two and sixteen as free. And not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, mm -hmm. but as the servants of the Most High. Yep. Yep. It says not using your liberty for a cloak of, of maliciousness. You know, like you know, like the elders say, you know, this grace period is not a is not a time to be playing around and uh, oh yeah, we have the we have the we have the grace now. We have, you know we, that's how Christians these these modern day Christians think about it. You know, oh yeah, we have the grace, we have the grace, and they just using this time just to complete. Pretty much, they they're worse. Freaks. You know, they're just being just complete demons on the planet Earth. But even those of us that understand and know that we're Israelites, you know, that's that's woken up to the truth. You know, we can't use this grace period as a time just to be lackadaisical, you know, to be mediocre. No, like this as scripture says we gotta redeem the time because the days are evil. So with this grace period, you know, the, the greatest form of servitude is, is serving one another. Right, walking in the spirit. It's how you fulfill the law of the grace. It's walking in the spirit, mm -hmm. not fulfilling the lust of flesh. Basically, being on point in any situation you're in fulfills the law. All right? It's all fulfilled in love. You know, but what you're born into goes into all of that. You know? God. God. Yeah. Charity. Yeah. So, like, 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 like the Apostle Paul said, he said, man can, you know, man can. Speak many great mysteries, and he like he actually he don't, he don't got charity, he don't got the, all that vain at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, I mean? we coming to a time where you know we gonna we gonna really have to lean on one another, man, as as a brotherhood. You know, we seeing all this stuff going on, these banks collapsing. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it's about to get it's gonna, it's gonna get to that level. He's gonna take it there. Yeah, you can clearly see it happen. <laughs> He's taking it there, so we go. It's gonna just you know. Yahweh Shah said, he said, uh, you will, the world's going to know that you are my disciples of how we treat one another. Yeah. You know, so, hey, that, that time is coming where we're going to, the Lord going to say, look, 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 where's the faith that on the earth? And he's going to see it through his men, uh, how we treat one another, though. Mainly, you know, everybody's going to have an opportunity to give and receive. Yep. That's right. Uh, we can jump back to 1 Corinthians 9 and continue with that.
All right. Continuing back on, 1 Corinthians 9 and uh, verse 19. Again, it says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, unto the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. Right. To them that are under the law, as under the law, <clears throat> that I might gain them that are under the law. Christ, and the Apostle Paul, like, look, so in any scenario, when he was in a scenario when he was around the Jews, or he was around those who were under the law, which is the, you know, the Jews, the circumcision, he became, he became, as, he became as one of them. He would, he would get, he would go to that level and become as one of them to ultimately gain them to Yahweh Shai. So he did, you know, if, if you if you buy a Gentile, a new convert that doesn't know that they're Israelite, but they hear the word, they may possibly they, they believe, you're not gonna go deep into the weight mat the weightier matters of the law. With them, right. With them. It's, it's not gonna be to no gain at that point. You know, so you 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 gotta know the levels of how you deal with one you how you deal with individuals based upon where they're at. Right, and that goes into discerning spirits. You know, you gotta you gotta read spirits to see what, you know where they at and know how how deep you need to go. That's the attribute of a master teacher to educate to draw out. You yeah. gotta draw out based on where they are mm -hmm. to be able to give them the aptitude that they need based on the level of where they are. You know? Right, right. As a matter of fact, uh, let's grab Acts sixteen. We can actually start at the top on that and read down to maybe like verse three. Sorry, three. He started verse one to read down the verse. Oh, okay. Acts 16 and 1. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed. But his father was a Greek. Right now, this is whenever the, this is whenever Timothy is brought into the equation. So it says that uh it said that his mother was a Jewess, which believed, right? But his father was a Greek. Now, when you get that word Greek in the in the Greek, that word there is, is a Helen. All right, and, and that word Helen means pretty much an, an, an Israelite in the sense that followed the customs, the ways, the language of the Greek way. Mm -hmm. So his father pretty much was he, he followed after the Greek. <coughs> it's, it's different than it's different than what you see in Acts six when it says a Hellenist, uh, a Hellenistress. Which is a Grecian, which is a which is an Israelite that lived outside of the land that made that just spoke Greek or spoke that 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 native language of where that was at. Right. You know, but his his father here was an Israelite, but he just followed after the customs of the Greeks. These are descendants of what we read about in First Maccabees. Exactly. Because remember, there were some who stood and didn't follow. You know, who, who didn't get Hellenized. You know, mm -hmm. some even died for that. But the, the Maccabees, they stood. Firmly, and you had from that, you know, uh, going down the line at the time of Yahweh Shah, you had those um, different sects of Israelites who knew they were Israelites, they were Jews. But then you had also the descendants of those who did fall to Hellenism, and they had children, and they had children, and they, had, and they all raised their children as complete Gentiles. Mm -hmm. All right. So Timothy's father is one of those, basically. And Paul was a descendant of one of those who stood stiffly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, these the Pharisees, they come, they all go back, that Hasmonean dynasty all goes back to the Maccabees at the end of the day. And yeah. them standing firmly. You know. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. You gotta know that history. Yeah. 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 Describe, like you said, describing the Pharisees is pretty much the descendants of that line that that yes. that, that stood stiffly. That's it. They were like we're not doing that. And they, you know, and that's and this. It's not like what they did was like the Pharisees was wrong, but they. But the thing is, is that you know, after time, <laughs> after time they went too far. Went too far. They, they, far. they started they like, making it about you know what I'm saying the outward appearance, and they started adding oral law on top of the law. You know what I'm saying the tradition. They would take the alphabet and make a law based on the alphabet of the Hebrew character within the law, or whatever. Yeah, that's like come on. You know what I'm saying, and like that, like 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 when you read in Acts 15, the Jerusalem kind of like, how are we gonna put these burdens upon these newly converts coming in? We couldn't, we couldn't even keep. It. Yeah. That's like another example too, you know. Um, but yeah, you can continue, Gary. Uh, verse two, <clears throat> which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Right, so Timothy had a good report amongst the brethren. 
you know. You know, his father, his father was in the, in the Greek customs. His mother believed. So Timothy, you know, he was a Gentile, but he, he believed, you know. You got it. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. Boom. So that's an example where it says unto the Jew I became as a Jew. So when he took Timothy with him, now at this time, you know, the, the circumcision, you know, when you read, now when you read the scriptures, it says what? Whether it be a circumcision or uncircumcision, don't avail. Now did the apostle Paul have to do this? Did, you know, was it was it a requirement? Not technically, according to according to the new covenant, no. It wasn't. But specifically, it says, and him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which are in those quarters. Mm -hmm. So if you if you got think you got Timothy preaching with him and he's uncircumcised and he's trying to gain the Jews, you know what I'm saying? It could it, it could look weird. It could look off. You know what I mean? And defeat his argument or his whole. They can use that. Like, how, yeah. you gonna, how you gonna try to preach? Right. You know what I'm saying? But you got this dude over here. He's uncircumcised. You know what I'm saying? He brought. Oh, he brought. Oh. He brought some Jake in the temple and at some point in his walk, you know, like they were planning to kill him. Like, yeah, yeah, it was that deep. It was bad. The, the, the Jews were like, we got to get this evil to this nigga that lost his mind. <laughs> that was like a violation, for so, real, for real. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. So if he was a circumcised preacher, it would have hampered the process in a sense. So, like, you know, the, the, so as a Jew, unto the Jews, he became as a Jew. Like the account where he, like, uh, he did the Nazarite vow and he went to the temple, you know, he shaved his head, you know, like he didn't have to necessarily do that. But ultimately, he did that to gain them to you, to gain those who were of the elect to you, how it shot at the end of the day. Right. You know, you got it already on the time. For that knew all that his father was a Greek. Boom, there it is. So they all knew about, they all knew about Timothy's father. You know, and that, that, that lets you know Timothy, Timothy's father's, his notoriety, you know what I'm saying? They all knew that his father was a Greek. You know, so with him getting circumcised, I'm like, oh, snap, okay. And he's preaching Yahweh shot, but he got him circumcised, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's that's using righteous God in a sense, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a case by case situation. Yeah. You got to be able to adapt to all of them, like being out on the highways and the byways. You know what I'm saying? It's just like just like we we'll say uh, Amos. We talk about a lion. Uh, you get away from a lion, and there goes a snake. You get away from a snake, there goes something else. Mm -hmm. It's like that on the highways and the byways. You know what I'm saying? You might have a night. You might have a night to where you have somebody missing, two or three people that are opposed. You, a, a, a time where it might be a mud or where you get to talk to the camera. Mm -hmm. You adjust to all those different things based on, you know what I'm saying? The, what's go, that, that's why you got a brother watching the comment board. All these different things that you got to be able to adapt to because the truth don't adjust to anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter who the audience is or how it's presented, the truth is the truth. You know? So, and like you're saying, whoever you're talking to, you got to be able to make it plain. Right. You know? Somebody has some, you know, some sort of letter to school, and you bring out examples or <clears throat> metaphors to turn the classroom. But you know, they from the hood, you gonna you gonna speak a different type of way, that way they can get it. You know, mm -hmm. you're not gonna speak over his head and use fifty dollar words, and you know, you can stop that. Mm -hmm. You won't make it make sense in his dollar process. The truth can adapt to any situation, and that's what I'm saying. But uh, with, with us <clears throat> being taught through the spirit, that our words be seasoned with salt. You know what I'm saying? Having a mouth that no man can gain, say all those different things come from the scriptures. Starting with the way we talk to each other. You know what I'm saying? The way we talk to each other. We don't talk to the world the way we talk to each other. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But even within the camp, even within the camp, you know what I'm saying? You talk to certain brothers a certain type of way that you don't talk to this group of brothers over here. Right. But you understand how to talk to each individual person. No understanding your flock. All those things tie into what this brother is bringing out. Excellent point. They got a they got a term in sports called KYP, and what KYP is like when you're speaking to quarterbacks or point guards, it's called know your personnel. So there's certain people on your team that they have particular attributes that you know. Okay, this is how I get him to move. Like I had a, a big man from New York. I have to speak to him rough to get him to do the things I needed him to do. And I had a guy from what Iowa that I had to speak. <laughs> It's, got, it's a total different conversation. I have to speak to him a certain kind of way to get him to move. And if you can't, if you're, if you're, if you're the, you know, the, like Cap, he knows how to deal with each of the men within the camp. He knows that he has to approach some certain men this way and another way. You have to be able to read the defense. Like you can't use the same spoon. You can't use the same spoon. So that's an attribute 
when you as you grow in the spirit that you kind of gain. Right. And for us to be men of the Lord and to stand stiffly for the gospel and to be, you know, utensils that are uh, beneficial to the mission, this is the attribute that you must have, right. especially in the times that's coming. Yep. Like, I know the scripture, I forgot where it's at. I think it was Peter somewhere. We're talking about the forward and the meat. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, having, you know, you have you have those particular spirits, which are all part of the same body, but they're necessary. I know that, like, Cap says that all the time. You know, like, like, I know that Ariala, like you say, like well, the way he comes, like very directly, like it's like it's necessary, you know. But you gotta, it's the Lord. The way the Lord sets it up, like with the net, with dynamics, with particular brothers, is very, very beautiful when you just analyze it from like just as an outsider just looking. It's like the, how the Lord has it. You have this, you have this. This brother may have the spirit to be able to communicate with this brother particular things. Yeah. Versus if somebody else was to do it, it may not necessarily connect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We have people from in the, within the body. We have people from every walk of life. Mm -hmm. There's no walk of life that somebody could come up that we don't have a brother that could relate to him. There's a, there's a flavor with every color crayon in the box. What they say? There's right. a flavor for every demographic of people right. when it comes to this truth. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I got that. Come, come. Second Peter's two and eighteen. Servants be subject to your masters. <coughs> Sub servants be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. Mm -hmm. Not only to the good and gentle, those that may not necessarily, you know, get on you in, in, in the sense where it's rough, but even to the even to the forward, ones that just come straight directly at it, it could be it, it could be a shock to those that could be new, like oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like damn, you know what I mean? Like, but it's necessary, it's necessary. Right. Right. you know. But you know, at this time, you have servants. At this time, too, they actually had physical masters, but even on, on a spiritual note, you know, like when it comes to the apostles and elders, you know, you have different ways of how particular leaders come out, but it's all necessary for the edification of the body at the end of the day, you know. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 9, if anybody else in that precept. Okay, we can go back to 1 Corinthians 9 and read verse uh, 21 now. All right, cut. 1 Corinthians 9 and 21 to them that are without the law, as without the law, mm -hmm. being not without the law to the Most High, but under the law to Yahweh Shai, mm -hmm. that I might gain them that are without the law. Right. So he's now he's now he's going to those that are without the law, those that are pretty much outside looking in. You know, so you got to. So the Apostle Paul knew how to adapt to who he was speaking to. Ultimately, to gain them to Yahweh Shai, he knew how to go, go, you know, uh, dumb it down if he needed to dumb it down, or really go in on the law if he needed to go into those that were under the law, you know, go, you know what I'm saying? He knew how to adjust. Then this is a very, very good, you know, attribute and teaching lesson, you know, that, that we read here to learn how we can be whenever we're speaking to individuals, because it's a lot of times, you know, we could be stuck in our own mind about how we want things to go, which of course. You know, we have a sermon, you know what I'm saying? We have a sermon and we, at the end of the day, the spirit is going to dictate how the conversation goes. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times we can be stuck in our mind of how, how we want to come out mm -hmm. versus, okay, see how this person is receiving it. And then you go down to their level to draw them in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the word is like a net. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The word, that, that's what I was trying to say. The word is a net that, that you cast out and it's going to draw in all kinds of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So. With the with the net, what do you do? With that net catches things, so we gotta learn how to uh, through the spirit. Not learn, not we gotta learn, but you know we we, we catch the we catch the listener with how we speak. It's about catching, drawing it where we catch it. But the Lord, it's the word that's gonna catch it. You know, all we gotta do is just preach the word. But it's knowing how how to preach the word being seasoned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And sometimes the spirit does call for the more forward, forward aspect of that too. You know, sometimes there may be a brother that the Lord put the spirit on and just come hard in a situation. And that just may be what the Lord wants. You know, a part of the truth is also being subject to that. Right, God, God. You know, too, because every situation ain't going to be smooth. Mm -hmm. But the goal is a smooth situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Impossible. Yes, you know? the goal. That's the goal. You know, I wouldn't right. end the conversation and the move on. All right. that matters. Right. That's beautiful, man. Because you know we got the we 
example, like the boss of the other car, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he's, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? But it's necessary. Like, I, man, it, it helps. You know, it, it helps a lot, you know, but it's just not being, it's not taking it and being offended by it. You know what I'm saying? Because you can be offended by how somebody comes at you. Because Jake, you know what I'm saying? When Jake carries roughness now, like when it comes to the roughness of a man talk, they, you know, they get, they get, oh, you gotta talk to me like that. You know, it's like, it's like a culture <laughs> shock. Why do you yell it? Why do you yell it? It's like, well, men, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, as a man, a man's supposed to be great. You know what I mean? You know, they take it as a culture shock. Oh, shit. You why know, but it's, like yeah, why are you talking to me that way? You don't really be there. You don't really yell at me. Human experience. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but we're about to get a lot of listeners. We're about to get, yeah. you know, we're about to get people about to start coming up because people watching, mm-hmm. people watching, and they, you know, some you know may be on the fence, but they gonna come and ask what they want to understand about who we are and what we teach. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Yeah, <laughs> I got a precept for you. Yeah, it's Proverbs sixteen and seven, and this is in the G and T. It says this. When you please the Lord, you can make your enemies into friends. Mm. So when you're naturally upon our walk, as you start to apply the scriptures to your life, you start to have discernment on dealing with particular people. You figure out how to maneuver in certain keywords that you might use with this person that you wouldn't use with that person to, to get them to actually listen. Because people come up, man, they're naturally on the defensive because of the, the masculine approach that we have. We're men. We speak like men. So to the world, especially people coming up now, it's like, what the because they right? So it's a, it's a way that you can deal with people to where they actually hold up. He's actually making sense. Let me listen. There's a way that you can deal with people to where you know, okay, you're explaining the scriptures and you're going through it to where they actually open up and they're ready to receive it. All right. So that's just the attribute that kind of you gain as you operate in righteousness and you genuinely apply the Lord's instruction to your life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Using guile. Yeah. You know. Subtility, I got a piece of too. And I'm going to read it in the, uh, the NLT too. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 33. It says, yeah, I think I had that. Hit you already had this one? But no, you I kind of figured you did. I, yeah, no, you, you can know, bring it up. the Go next ahead. chapter. You can start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 33. Yeah. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and uh, verse 33. It says, Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. Because mm. that's the whole objective. Is to you know convert the souls that could be mm-hmm. part of the, the Most High's elect to come into the faith, mm-hmm. you know, meet them in ever whatever capacity that they that they'll be fully persuaded in their own mind, you know. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, you make it about you and your show, then not the right. Mind. You know, it's on your perspective, and you lock it on your shit. It's not gonna come across. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what that's what you know when you read Acts five. That's what it said. It says if this work be of men, it's gonna come to naught. Right. You know, and, and you, you got a lot of examples of that out there. You know, they make they make the, the truth about them. I'm gonna do it the way I'm gonna do it. They get it, they get it. Which to some degree, I can see that too. But mm-hmm. you gotta know what you're dealing with. You know, yeah, right, right. Yeah. You can't you can't take that mentality into every situation. Right, right. Did the situation call for it? Yeah. Right. So yeah, you can't. What just, they here for? <laughs> you can't just you can't just sit it on automatic to that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> It's good to talk about convincing the game, sir. Right, yeah. exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, how, you know, there's ways that there's ways that you can do that. You know what I'm saying? Versus and I having a, a, just a straight gun hole, one, one way way of thinking. You know right. what I'm saying? You got it. But this is in the NLT, uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 33. It says, I too try to please everyone and everything I do. I don't just do what is best for me, I do what is best for others so that many may be saved. So it's all about the, the will of the Heavenly Father sure. and the elect being sealed at the end of the day, man. Not trying to do your own agenda. I'm a, this is just me. This is just the way I'm coming. Because, you know, we've had guys say that in the past. That's just my spirit. I'm the type of dude, you know. <laughs> the LL Cool J, I'm the type of guy. But you know, you know, but like, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, your hollow shot did that, man. You, you, you got to be. You know, you got to learn to be selfless in this thing, you know, like, whereas we take ourselves out, we got to take ourselves out the equation, you know what I'm saying, and, and allow your hollow box and outshine the spirit of the Lord to flow through us, to let the word do the work, you know what I'm saying, but we can, when you make it about yourself, and you make it about how you, you're, you know what I'm saying, your way of doing it, yeah. it, it kind of takes away, it takes away the, 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 the power of the word at that point. 
you know what I'm saying? Because you're making it about you. You, you, you know, you pulling your Howard Shaw's punches when yeah, you do exactly. that. Um, did you, are we still in Acts six sixteen? No, no, we we were. But no. Did we read down to verse five? Uh, because if, if, you, if you read down to verse four and five, it, it shows you that applying this attribute works. It works. It's not just something. Yeah, it's uh, Acts six. Okay, just to back up what y'all both are saying. Uh, this is Second uh, Thessalonians three and one. It says, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course mm -hmm. and be glorified even as, as it is with you. So you have to allow the word to have free course, meaning you're not trying to glorify yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. yep. yep. yeah. you, you know, you can quench the spirit at times. Right. You know, and, and that's one thing to worry about. Not necessarily worry about. I don't want to use that word. But that, you know, you don't want to yeah. quench the spirit. You know what I'm saying? You got to let the word, you got to let the word have free course. To do what the word is, is, is made to do. The word is the power. That's right. The, the power is in the word of Yahweh by Shema Bashar. You know, it's not it's not in us, we're just vessel that the word is in, and the, and the word's gonna do the rest. Our, our job is just to get it out there. But how the word gets out there is yeah. is, is is the key too. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you got it. Uh this Acts 16, we read through three, so I'll just read verse four. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them decrees for the keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. So because Timothy went in, you know, he did, he, he was circumcised and it was packaged the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, many souls were gained. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. So it works. We're not just out here just going into this lesson for just, you know, shits and giggles. You have to have this attribute in order to, you know, fulfill the mission. This is something that you that's necessary to us get into our end point. Mm -hmm. nope. And Paul, the Apostle Paul didn't have to do that. He didn't have to have Timothy be circumcised, you know. But he knew he knew the area and he knew the <laughs> he knew where he was at. He knew where he was going, yeah. and he knew he was where he he knew where he was going, and he knew who he was about to get ready to talk to. Right. And preacher Howard, I was like, oh snap, with Timothy, we know his father was a Greek, but then he got circumcised. Oh shit. Yeah, he was going. He was going to send them to Ephesus. Yep. Basically, Timothy went to Ephesus. He, went, he was. Paul sent them there. He was preparing them. Like, it's going to be a lot of BS. You kill them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then uh, that other account uh, where uh, where Paul, uh, man, what was it? He, uh, they told him he had to put up a sacrifice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, they, yeah, they, they yeah, rolled yeah. over. The circus was a roll over. He had, he, and he had to do that to be able to gain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was another situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said, well, you're speaking against the law. Prove you still follow the law by offering yeah. up a sacrifice. Yeah. Well, Paul did it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. you know, they were rolled on it, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like, it whoop his ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, also Paul, man. He, was, he went through it, man. He went through it. He went through it. Man, he went through it. The spirit, man, how shy was dealing with the Apostle Paul on a high level. Right? I believe those were believing Jews that believing that was like James and and the man made it do that, I believe. I oh, think really? Yeah. 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 Wow. Hey, yeah. that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Y'all yeah. wanna find it? Yeah, man. I think it's Acts twenty. Yeah, 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 he, did, 20. He, did, he did what was uh, whatever was necessary. You know, he was, he was put in those sticky situations. <laughs> he was put in those sticky situations. That, that's, that, was, that was all one lifetime. Just, you know what I'm saying? That, when, you, when you read about that, like when, uh, you know, when you go through it chapter for chapter, from the time of Paul, what, in chapter 9, from the time you get to him and he go through, yeah. by the time you get to the end, you like, oh, he went through all those different things just so yeah. you can understand. How to be, how to deal in these situations. No matter what situation you in, you gotta be in the spirit. Yeah. You, like we like say, when you're on the highway, somebody cut you off. Obviously, he left the crib too late. Let him have it. Yeah. Right. You can put it in line at the store. You know, at work. Yeah. Amongst your coworkers, you can use all. You can utilize all these attributes at all times. It, there's never a situation where being in the spirit will work against you. You know what I'm saying? And tap and find an opportunity to tap into that. You you can see it now. You can see it now. You know what I'm saying? That that that, that person who you paid to give you gas money to, 
that that's I guarantee you they'll remember you when they get to the crib. That light just shined off of you. Mm -hmm. Those little conversations you have throughout mm -hmm. the day with little they all they hold on to that shit. You'll never remember yeah. having that conversation at all. But that that light that shined on yeah. you for that moment came from y'all watching y'all shine through you. Yeah. And they saw it. And they hold on to that type of stuff. Yeah. So that's so like well, when you have those situations to where your enemy is at peace with you. Or being away to uh uh kiss a police officer on the neck. You know what I'm saying? To where he'll destroy you. He end up yeah. letting you go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All those type of things. You you see countless accounts of our forefathers maneuvering through society with this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Playing chess. You see? And we get and it's, and it's right at our fingertips every day. Yeah. You know, so for the brother to be wanting to go into this at this refreshed time that we about to go into. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it makes sense to be able to know how to conduct yourself amongst the matrix, you yeah. know? In the time of acts. Yeah. yeah. Actions. Yeah. You know? Many are being added to the body. So our actions are going to have to be elevated too as the most high is bringing more believers into this thing. We got to We got to think two, three steps mm -hmm. ahead. Uh, Cap, he was talking to the guy on the other side. It's correct. That was asking questions yesterday. And you know that, example, yeah, that, 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 Edomite, that Edomite that came up, he said, man, if I was in my old ways, this is correct. Yeah, if I was in my old ways, I would have I would, I would, I would, I would knocked his ass out. But what did Cap say? He said, yeah, but you knock him out what? You're not going to get a reward. Nobody going to interview you. <laughs> You're not getting paid. He was like, yeah, at the end of the, what, is, what is that you in that moment making that decision? What is it? How is it going to benefit in the long run? So us, we really got to be on that in that mind frame at a high level, you know. And he also said, my bad. He also said that he uh, asked, and you can speak on it, uh, Cap. He asked, uh, went up to my body, yeah. and went and tried to speak to them. He said they were saying some outlandish, outlandish shit. I'm coming all rough at them, you know. Yeah. Just... Were they were they using this <laughs> attribute that right. we're speaking about today? Of course not. No. Right. And clearly they do believe, but they shoot, yeah, but they they got they shoot them off because they they didn't know how to act. They didn't know how to use the guy. You see, yeah. where are your fringes at? Yeah, are you you got where your fringes? You need to wear fringes. I'm like, what the hell? What is a fringe? Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Well, why would you do that to somebody's first time? Oh, question. Yeah, yeah, the Northern Kingdom, huh. niggas, head, niggas. You don't beat them over the head with the law like that. Right. You gotta learn how to use. See where your beard at? <laughs> Your brother can't even grow a beard. <laughs> yeah, man. So that's that's a, that's a prime example. You know, he went to one body and was like, he turned off because he already know how they come. How they coming? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Instead of hitting somebody over the head with the law, man, just come over the house with some food. You know what I'm saying? Beans. Yeah, come over the house. Come over the house with some food, some lawful food. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Beans. And when they be like, man, what's this? You know what I'm saying? Oh man, this little damn, you know, little something, something. You know, you explain <laughs> yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? And then you get. Get gaining with God. Yep. But yeah, nigga, you eating swine and kicking me in the stomach and shit. You need to throw it all up or nah, man. That's what I'm saying. Yep. You know, you know how Jake is. Jake yeah. is. You know, certain laws you mentioned. Yeah. You know, but let it be a part of your conversation. You know what I'm saying? Instead of a part of your. You need to know yeah. why you need to repent. Right. right. You know what That's I'm saying? The yeah. Before understanding you're an Israelite, we, we pissed the most high off. You know, we in this situation due to this, do the boo, the boo. This is why we need to repent. The stuff we've been doing, you know, yeah, it's working against us, it's against the Lord. We didn't even know. Shit, the case in point, boom. And you know, yeah, shit, uh, yeah. lobster used to be prison food. Yep. You know, now it's delicacy. The Bible say don't eat it. Samples. Samples. Right. You, you, you don't, you don't give some, yeah. take this five course, yeah, 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 give yeah, him yeah. a sample. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey think about this. You think yeah. about that? Yeah, that ain't gonna happen on the highways and the byways. You know, so that, yeah. that's more of a conversation that you're gonna have yeah. with a brother that been coming out, you've been seeing yeah. them. You know what I'm saying? You get to pick their brain and out. But that microwave mentality, that microwave mentality, so many people don't realize that the truth, everything that they ever been wondering and wanting to know and all that was yeah. right at their fingertips. Right. They acted like a nigga at the last yeah. second, you know? <laughs> but as I said, being able to deal with whoever come up, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I will say knowing that Israel was scattered amongst everybody, you're going to have to go through everybody to get to bring, to bring those in. You see, that's why the ministry is set up the way it's set up, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to get that in Acts. Yep. Oh, oh, you yeah. got it. I got it. Uh, mm -hmm. I got it. Okay. Yeah, Acts uh, 21 and what were you going to start? 27? 26. 26, okay. Mm -hmm. Paul arrested. 
man. Acts 21 and 26. Then Paul took the men, and the next day purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be uh, offered for every one of them. Verse 27. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews, which were of Asia, when they saw, so it wasn't them, it wasn't, it said, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, men of Israel, help. This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law in this place <laughs> and further brought Greeks also into the temple and have polluted this holy place. Man, man, this is the guy, man. He did brought the really he heathen into the temple. Right. You know, and I don't say that word Greeks there. I can pull it real fast for you. This word Greeks here. Uh, verse 28. That's perfect. They're talking about Israelite foreigners. Yeah. You know, yes. Yeah. You yeah. say it all the time. But they hardcore to the law. But they going to bring heathen in? Nah. Yeah. It don't make no sense. What, well, they're going to want heathen to have to come up under the law. They understood that the, that first coming of the Lord for Israel. Yeah. Why would they be so pissed off about actual heathen keeping it all? It's Israelites. Right. Go ahead. That word Greeks is heaven. Those those who are following the customs originally after the customs of the uh, of the Greeks, right. the language, the ways of life, the ways of life that that were you know that were converted to you know believing in Yahweh. You know. Can, can I back you up with a quick precept just for the listeners? John seven and thirty five in the NLT is in the New Testament, and the Jewish quote I'm doing air quotes leaders were puzzled were puzzled by the statement. Where was he planning to go? Talking about Yahweh Shah, they asked, is he thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews in other lands because we were scattered? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Cut it. Bring it out. <laughs> it says, it hath polluted the holy place. Verse 29. For he hath seen before him, um, for they had seen before with him in the city Trophim. Trophimus, an Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. <laughs> so they saw Paul with a, with a Jake, you know. Everybody with this nigga, they brought, he brought this nigga into the temple. This nigga lost his mind. Trophimus. Yeah. <laughs> What that mean? Trophy. It's got to be like a triumph or something, right? Like, Trophy. Trophy. <laughs> nutritious. Wow. 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 <laughs> nutritious. <laughs> nutritious. Interesting. So it says, um, and all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the, uh, the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was up in an uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down upon unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating Paul, beating him up, man. man. Then the chief captain came there and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains, and demanded who he was, who he was, and what he had done. And some cried one thing and some another among the multitude. <laughs> Saying shit. Man. This. And when he could not, uh, and when he could not know the, the certainty of the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. He was like, "Dude, what the fuck is going on? Take him over here, man." He was just screaming, acting, accusing him. He was like, "What the hell is going on?" And when he came upon the stairs, 
so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. They had to protect him. Yeah. They had to carry him up. They had to carry him up the stairs. He didn't even walk. Right. <laughs> but read it in NLT. It says, and the crowd followed behind him, shouting, kill him, kill him. Man, shit. His ass. <laughs> Is this what they were gonna? Is this what they made him offer a sacrifice? I know. That, I know. That's when he went to Jerusalem and he got pretty much under custody. I don't think so. In this yeah. account. I mean, I that. But I mean, you know, the point was made. Kind of. The point was made. Yeah, he could have got killed. Just he could have got, got killed. killed. <laughs> Man, his walk was way more action packed than a sitcom. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, I can just see that in my head. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's like, damn, he was yeah. going through something all the time, it seemed. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, because what the, 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 the book of Acts, that's like what, almost 30 years? That's almost like a 30 year span. You know what yeah. I'm saying? 12 seasons is just bullshit. You know what I'm saying? He did a lot. <laughs> he did a lot in the time. You know, when, when you think about the, from the time the hour shot, left and the apostles took over that was a nice little old minute you know what i'm saying in mm -hmm. history you can't take you can't take that history away that happened so and now it's happening again when you think about it i would say when you think about it from the time uh uh high priest of abimix from him to now that's a nice little old chunk of history right there right mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and we came in at the time that we came in to uh, fulfill our lots, but like the, like the, like the brother going into, we've been taught how to deal amongst each other before we was unleashed on the world, you know. So when the world see us, they can see like oh. how how I told us how to act. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. How he told us how to be. You know what I'm saying. When you bring full circle, going back from all the precepts that came out, getting back to the brother's point. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm uh, start up real quick for in the same chapter. I think this is the point where you was talking about. We'll burn, we'll, we'll burn. Starting at verse 18, because that, that's what it mentions James. Yeah. And then, you know, I'll, I'll read it for you. Uh, Acts 21 to 18, it says, In the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things the Most High had wrought, uh, excuse me, what things the Most High had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. When they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. And, and that proves that not all every single Jew at this time was uh, rejected the Lord. He had thousands that believed. It says, uh, And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after their customs. What is it therefore? Pretty much like, what is it, right? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on them. Take them and purify thyself with them. And so this is what James is saying. Like, like that's, this is what you're saying. Right, right. Because yeah. basically, yeah, uh, there were, there were, when you, I believe, these men were coming out of the Nazarite vow, and I believe there was a sacrifice associated with that. Mm -hmm. So they was like, look, this is what, what you, we need you to do. Yeah. All right, we got two men that's going to get purified later. You do the sacrifice. Do it with them. Do it with them. Yeah. <laughs> do it with them so we, they can see. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's that. Yeah. And what that did was open the door yeah. where he could gain more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was constantly put in those situations. Mm -hmm. You know, things will happen to him. Just so other people can see the power of your how about shot. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the message that he was teaching went right along with it as this little package did. But like like Pastor Yashwamba always said, it's it's, it's it's gonna draw you in. You know what I'm saying? It ain't one of those things, it was it ain't one of those things where everybody's gonna wanna see it or everybody's gonna love it. It's gonna it's just what you see is for you, for your particular, you know what I'm saying, coming into this thing. Everybody got their own story. Of what it was that sealed the deal for you, you know, mm -hmm. and things will happen to Paul just so people can see, yeah, just like things will happen to us, you know what I'm saying? Being able to uh, 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 heal people through the spirit and all these different uh, uh, actions and feats that happened in the scriptures, they all happened just so the Lord's power can be shown mm -hmm. to convert somebody, you know, even what it was, miracles, 
when you look up the word miracles, it goes into uh, how the Lord uses a man to do certain things to show his power. Mm -hmm. You know, and it starts with conversation. Yep, yep. That's right. Um, verse 24, I'll read this real quick, and then uh, we'll go back. It says, take them and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them. I Meaning being at charges pretty much means to pay their, you know, the Apostle Paul was to pay their expenses for the sacrifice, for like, for the, for the uh, sacrifice. And be at charges with them, and, and they may shave their heads. And all may know that the uh, and all may know that those things were of they were informed concerning thee nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. But that's what they were like, man. Look, you know, just so that, like you said, just so they know, do the sacrifice with them so that they know that you're not telling them to break the law. Because if he was telling them to break the law, he wouldn't have did it. You know what I'm saying? That was the whole argument with the fact that you teaching them. They, they saying that they, you, you teaching them to not keep the law. So keep the law. Show it openly. We, we, we know you keep the law, but show it openly to them. You know what I'm saying? That's a, man, that's, a, that's actually a beautiful example. I didn't think about this really, you know, right those precepts of the song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But see, it was James and it. Yeah. yeah it was good. Circumcision. <laughs> like, it was like, look, bro. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. in Jerusalem, like, like, in Jerusalem, man, I was like, man, Jerusalem was the followers of, of Yahweh in Jerusalem, that was that was like the last place you wanted to be. Yeah, they were hardcore. You know, that was the last place you wanted to be. That's why when the Apostle Paul when he told them, when he told his uh you know, the, the, the followers that he was going to Jerusalem, I was like, man, no, but you you going to Jerusalem, bro? I don't think that's a good idea. You know, yeah. like, he was praying for somebody, this is what the Lord wants me to do. You know what I'm saying? You. Say again. I said they kill you. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much what it was. That's mm -hmm. what happened. We read it, when we read down shit. That was the first thing that happened. They took them into custody. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's get Galatians 2 real quick. We can just read verses 1 to 3 in Galatians 2. He said, unto the, he said, unto those without the law, I became as, as one without the law. Right? What verse? Let's start at verse 1 and read out of verse 1. Galatians 2 and 1. And this is also 2. Starting in Galatians 2, this is also the Jerusalem council that you read in Acts 15. It's just another another not necessarily version but another perspective of it. right just condensed yeah, yeah. galatians 2 and, and from the top then 14 years after i went up again to jerusalem with barnabas and took titus with me also and i was talking about titus you know after 14 years after he received the revelation from yahweh so i took him 14 years and to actually go go up to back to jerusalem mm -hmm. you know go ahead verse 2 and i went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach, uh, which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, mm -hmm. lest by any means I should run or have run in vain. Right. So he said by revelation, he communicated pretty much to the heads, Peter, James, and John. You know them in Jerusalem, the the, the message that he received from Yahweh Shai. We say he pretty he, he came privately to them which were of reputation, at least by any means I should run or have run in vain. Pretty much to make sure that everything was in alignment. You know, like okay, the the, the the message that I'm preaching, this is what was revealed unto me. Right. I want to bring it by y'all to make sure that we that this is all in, a, in one accordance. Right. You know, as a matter of fact, you got an NLT right there. Uh, you know, I, 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 I actually was looking at an NLT. What, what, yeah, what is oh, it? Saying? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking. It'll be like go to Yashua, but if he found something new in the scriptures, a new breakdown or a twist or whatever, he would probably go to one call a possible rum or one of the heads mm -hmm. and discuss it with them. You know, yeah. should I bring this out before just getting on camera and making a video. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, that's happened a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. In the NLT, uh, Galatians 2 and 2, yeah, it says, uh, I went there because the Most High revealed to me that I should go. Mm -hmm. uh, while I was there, I met privately with those considered to be the leaders of the church and shared with them the message that, uh, the message I had been preaching to the Gentiles. I wanted to make sure that we were in agreement. See? For fear that all my efforts had been wasted and I was running the race for nothing. Man, so he went up there after, even though it was revealed to him by Yahweh Shah, he still went to the heads of the church to make sure that the message he was speaking was in agreement and that he just wasn't bullshit. That's him being in order too. Being that's that's a, that's being in, man in order. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But you got a lot of Jake that don't like to, that don't like to be in order. Mm -hmm. yeah. and and also to add to your point, they don't trust that the men 
that how about you got shot set up? Well, they don't trust that the employer set up other men or something. Right. They all revealed it to me. Yeah, like mm -hmm. like they're just the only guy that the spirit is dealing with, and there's no structure on earth. So that shows that humility that Paul had. Yeah, because I mean, think about it. He said 14 years he went back up to Jerusalem, right? And when you read Acts nine. That's when you read about the Apostle Paul's conversion. And then Acts 10, it goes into Cornelius, which was revealed unto Peter. Now it doesn't tell you how long the time that was from that time, from you know, Acts 9 and chapter, chapter 9, chapter 10. But we know that the message was revealed unto Peter first. So it was all through the revelation at the same time. Like it was all it all coincided regardless at the same time. You know what I'm saying? And it was revealed. And Yahweh said that he said it. He said, Yahweh shot revealed it unto me to go up there. You know what I'm saying? To make sure that what I've been preaching out here doing my thing, because he said he conferred not with flesh and blood, he was, he was already preaching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To make sure that you know everything was in alignment. You know, everything was in agreement, which goes back to the same doctrine being teached. Oh, you could teach this, we could teach that, we could all come together. Apostle Paul didn't do that. He wanted to make sure everything was in alignment, you know. Uh you can read verse three. Kind of Galatians two, verse three. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Boom. So now Titus, with him being a Greek, is that, that's the same word, Helen, there, right? It says he wasn't compelled to be circumcised when he went up to Jerusalem with the Apostle Paul. That's risky. <laughs> yeah. But but that goes into what? The Jerusalem Council was like, man, look, you know, to tell them not to eat anything strangled, you know what I'm saying, uh, to abstain from fornication. But they yeah, reported that too, like. I bring Titus, da, 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 you yeah. know. And he wasn't he wasn't the, the, the heads of the church wasn't compelling him to get circumcised. Right, right, right. You know, because of and that action, that action brought more into the ministry. Yep. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's, that's a good point, point, man. It's a case by case situation. You know, you just gotta be in the spirit on each it's each y'all said you gotta be in the spirit no matter who you're dealing with. You know, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day you realize that it's your how about shouldn't have a shy sheep. That you're dealing with, right? You know what I'm saying. So being able, being able to have those conversations, whether they be gentle or forward, you dealing with, uh, you dealing with all of them. You mm -hmm. know, but sometimes you're gonna need to call somebody else and be like to seek counsel and all these different things. Some things you're gonna be able to have them on your own. Some things you're gonna have to make that call. But being able to judge those situations, all those are judgments. Each decision you make is a judgment. You know what I'm saying? You want to hit more than you miss. <laughs> you want to hit more than you miss when you walk through the spirit. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man. Just knowing, knowing all, you know, knowing, knowing the right judgment calls, man. You know, in the spirit. Uh, that's it on Galatians too. Uh, so we can jump back to First Corinthians nine, verse twenty-two. Okay, let's back to you more. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, back to First Corinthians nine and verse twenty-two. It says, "To the weak I became as weak." That I might gain the weak, and I uh, excuse me, I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Right. So he he, he pretty much to the weak he became weak, to the strong he became strong. You know, it says, uh, 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 I am made all things to all men. I become all things to all men, so that I may I might by all means save some. You know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, he took himself. Out the equation, because remember, the Apostle Paul was a master in the law. Like he knew, like come on, he's a Pharisee Man. of the Pharisee. You know what I'm saying? So if, if anything, he could he could have came he could have came with with straight out the you know what I'm saying straight out the law and would, it could have went completely over people's heads. You see, so he knew how to adapt to particular scenarios, situations, who he was talking to to gain to Yahweh Shai. You know what? Like like we were saying earlier, letting our speech be seasoned with salt. You know, Vincent so, like, so like, it's trying to find a common 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 common. When you read it in the NFT, that's what he said. No, oh, uh, same can't speak Greek when people, you know, like we speak in Greek, but here they can speak English. No, so we got to come down to that level. Mm -hmm. you know? Got to be relatable. Yep, right. right, right. Mm -hmm. You got an NFT, ever? Yeah, it says First Corinthians nine and twenty-two. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness, for I want to bring the weak to Hamashiach. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Establishing country. That's right. <laughs> you know, 
And that takes that, that takes time. That takes you know yeah. experience, man. Like you, when you see the apostles and elders deal, man, you you see that in live and, and direct and act like real time, man. You know, you you see that like with, with men of experience, how they how they talk and how they, like the apostles begin with apostles calling down how they communicate. You're like, dang, you know what I'm saying? Like how they know how to maneuver through conversation yeah. with particular people. Yeah, this is a prime example. Apostle to hard, man. Dang. Oh my goodness, real, like, somebody could be walking by, he'll pick out anything. To bring up a tie, he'll it'll be some on their shirt, and he'll say, "So what you know? Like, do you know?" And he'll just go, you know what I mean? He just goes into, and he makes it relatable to to a place to where they can actually comprehend what what the fullness of what we're trying to get across. And he'll he'll slip it in and give them little samples of, "Hey, this is what this is about." Establish mm-hmm. that common ground. Like, yeah, yeah, consider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and somebody you see somebody walking up with a basketball in their hand or whatever the case may be. You know, with bat, like, that, like that one Jake with the basketball outfit only, like Ari, Elder Ariola did a beautiful example of that, like the couple of two weekends ago, how he established common ground with that guy. You know what I'm saying? You know, you play basketball, you can mention sports or whatever. Yeah. That, I mean, when, when you read down, the Apostle, the Apostle Paul started mentioning the Olympics. Yeah. Boxing. You're like running, that you run the race and boxing. You know, because you got to think the Isthmus games going back yeah. then. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, a lot of gen- Jake's that in a Gentile state of mind going to the Olympics. So, he used the Olympics. As a means of of going down to their level to bring to to mention the truth with it, like a race. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's like, oh, it's relatable. That that's the spirit. How he mentioned that right afterwards, like not all that run, run the race, win the prize. On the one, you know what I'm saying. Mm. That was very big at that time with the Isthmus game, like the Olympics at the time. You know, um, Romans 14 and one. I actually, read. this is Romans chapter 14, verse one. It says, "Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye." but not to doubtful disputations. So somebody that may not necessarily be as strong in the faith as you are, you know, but they believe you have to go down to that level to receive them. But it says not to doubtful disputations because that, that person may come with an opinion and it may not necessarily be correct and you got to correct them with it, but there's a way about going about it. As a matter of fact, uh, anybody, can you put it up in the, in the NLT? Yeah. Which verse again? 14 and 1. Romans okay. 14 and 1. Yeah, this is... a. Uh... In the NLT, it says, except other believers who are weak in faith and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. Right. And that, does that mean that they come up spewing some madness, you just agree? No, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that. You know what I'm saying? Of course, they come up talking about some BS, but they're on a level that they don't know. You got to, there's a way that you can go about it to correct them. And right, it, it, it a, there's a right way to go about correcting it. You know what I'm saying? In, in, the, in the sense, not where it's not an argument back and forth. Yeah, it's you not profitable saying? anyway. Arguing with somebody that you already <laughs> recognize that they don't know something, mm-hmm. it's gonna be counterproductive. You know? Yeah, like somebody come up, like a, a, a somebody coming up listening and inquiring, and they mention you mentioned that hell ain't real, which we know that is not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But according to their life, they they've already known to believe that hell is a place where you burn forever. They're like, what do you mean hell ain't real? They try to convince you, and they try to go. Well, what about this scripture? <laughs> yeah. And you bring the scripture on, you break it down, and then you give an example. Yep. You know, right. because it's according, it's, it's according to doctrine. Exactly. That's You're going off. That's, that's the main thing. You're correcting them according to the doctrine. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's where people get it twisted. They think that when we come with what's scriptural, that we coming off, uh, uh, coming out the dome, or we coming mm-hmm. out. No, 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 no. This is what the Bible is talking about. Yeah. You mm-hmm. see, so when you correct somebody, when you correct somebody, you correct them according to that. You know, and you find ways to show them in the scriptures. You know, yep. Well, we already know where to find it. It's just about whether or not the spirit allow us to present it before they either take it or not. Package. Right. Yeah. You know, you someone talk about that. You're like, man, no, I ain't no man, man. You dumbass nigga. You dumbass nigga. How you don't know that? How you don't know that, man? You dumbass nigga. Yeah, yeah. that'll even more confusing. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, it ain't, but there ain't no edification coming from that at all. Not now. now yeah. Into a shouting contest, and it's you know, it's no, it's no edification in that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How the hell you didn't know that? You know, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, well, you don't know. Yeah, if you don't know. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't know, but that doesn't mean that you, you know, you, you, you know, there's a way to go about it. That's put it like that. Right, right. You got something, Mark? Go ahead. Go ahead. This is Philippians uh, one, uh, verse ten. We'll jump. Uh, start at verse nine. It says, and I. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, 
that ye may be sincere without offense to the day of Mashiach. And going to, and like I said, that's, we're supposed to be excellent on proving and showing things, you know, that we, if we talk to someone, like on how we can bow away, if we want to prove certain things, we want to be sincere about it, you know, not give them too much offense. Because if you just offend someone that's when they walk back, they don't want to hear it. You're just going to, you know, maybe I don't know, you know, this and that, and, and make them just turn away and walk away. You right. know, so you want to be sincere about it. Yeah, like, you know, you got somebody walking up to the camp, and it's a, you know, it'd be, you know, it'd be like, let's say it's like a little girl or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Or it'd be a man, you know, like a little girl. Maybe, you know, like a very young girl. Be over here, man. You know, man, these bitches are here. Da, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's like, man, you, know, shit. you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, you know, you got to you gotta pick and choose the word that you, you know, how you speak. Now, of course, granted, at times, the moment in the spirit can happen where you Heated where particular words may come out, of course, from men. You know what I'm saying? But I, hey, I, I, I'm a witness. I remember, you know, at times, you know, Elder, Elder Yashawamba, Elder Ariyat, Elder Yashawamba, I may be speaking, and somebody may be like a, a child or somebody coming up, hey, brother, yeah. you know, hey, don't, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, you don't go, you know what I mean? That happened to me. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an example. You know what I'm saying? Shit, that happened to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's just knowing how to. How to go down to that common ground, you know what I'm saying, with somebody. Um, First Corinthians 8 and 9, it says, But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. So we got, we got liberty in Yahweh Shah, you know what I'm saying? But that is, our liberty that we do have, you know, it can become a stumbling block to those that may not be as strong in the faith as you are, with particular things that you may do. Like, for example, when you read in this chapter, it's talking about eating food, sacrifice to idols, and things of that nature. You know, somebody that's weak in the faith, see that, be like, what the hell? Like, huh? You know what I'm saying? So it's just knowing how to do things around particular individuals. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and that's really all that I had, honestly. If anybody else, did anybody else have any other precepts or anything? Okay. Uh, so with that, you know, Lord's Lord's lesson was edifying. Uh, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us this truth and that still teaches this truth. And always much peace, love, and salutation to the elect of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.